Alright guys, TouchCorp here back again today, hopefully enjoying your Wednesday so far and today we've got a double upload once again, gonna be talking about this God RX move, benched off the Minnesota Rocker squad, a very surprising change to be honest, ahead of champs, then again they have lost several series in a row now as we will look at, a few events ago Alex had this thumb injury, Exceed came in for him, now they've decided that God RX, one of their early season stars, certainly well arguably their best player on LAN earlier this season, in the online arena, definitely gone downhill quite significantly statistically and that is effectively the reason why he has now been removed out of the team and Exceed is coming into the team instead. You know, ahead of champs, they have a pretty difficult run. They are starting in the winner's bracket, though, at the very least, but they're going to play New York first. If they win that, then they have to play Chicago, and then they'll probably at some point go down to losers. But will they get a better result here than they would have done if they'd have had God RX? That is certainly the question. No other teams as of yet that we know of making teams changes ahead of champs. But if there is one team to do it, certainly the Rocker, given their recent form. Like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're new. As always, I would greatly appreciate it. Let's hop into things then here. So Cronus CDL Intel says, first of all, Rocker is scrimming Dallas right now with Exceed instead of God RX, what exactly is going on? So we can see this on the big screen. So Silly, Alex, Asim, Exceed, and Balling Boys, and that's Assault, as you can see right here. Scrimming, of course, against the Dallas Empire. These are some other tweets from God RX, which kind of imply the similar thing. Expect streams this week. Who's going to take over the dance with me? Also going to play tens. And, uh, well, these tweets from a couple of days ago, which I saw at the time, and I was like, hmm, are these indicative of anything? Turns out they may, well, well, they probably might have been, right? It's going to be okay. This tweet, as you can see right here, and then this one comes in from God RX. And after Crone tweets this out, Jerome then says, it's, uh, you know, the time has come. Everything has now come to light. This is what Minnesota have to say about it then. So they do this announcement here on Twitter. And, uh, well, it's not, um, it's got some music in the background. I don't want exactly want to play it on screen for you guys. I'll, of course, leave it linked down below. However, they do go into some great detail on, on Reddit. They make a, you know, full Reddit thread, an AMA. They reply to plenty of comments, these guys. Certainly great transparency here from the Minnesota Rocker staff, which is something that we've really seen from the, this team the entire season. And, and we haven't really seen from other teams, right? When, when team changes tend to be made, they tend to happen behind the scenes. Crone then tweets it out and we don't hear too much about it. Whereas here, the Rocker, like immediately after it gets leaked, they, okay, all right, maybe they already have this prepared. But basically they've got PR stuff ready to go and um, they're happy to talk to the community about why they've made this change and the reasoning behind it. Whereas, um, well, typically with changes in Call of Duty past and also most team changes this entire season, we haven't got anywhere near that level of transparency. So definitely appreciated for the Rocker. And they go into quite some depth here at about exactly exactly why this team change has been made. Of course, the interesting part of it, I suppose, is, is God RX the right one to move out of the squad? Because it's no doubt this team probably needed a change. Early season, they were fantastic, especially in the LAN environment, widely considered the fourth best team in the game after FaZe, Dallas, and Huntsman, whatever order you happen to put those in earlier this season. But Rocker were definitely right there behind them early season. They never managed to win an event when it went to the online arena. I think they made the grand finals and lost to Atlanta FaZe at the Atlanta FaZe home series. Then it went online and they lost to the Florida Mutineers in the first one back. And since then, it's been a downhill trajectory. And I think they've lost their last like eight series in a row or something online. And God RX after dropping 1.3s, 1.4s, and widely considered by pretty much everyone the best player on that team, and maybe a top five player in the game, top three player in the game, people were talking about at times, and certainly not for, you know, not for no reasons at all. Now we're at a point where he's not dropping numbers and Minnesota have fallen off and what decision do they decide to make as a result of this? And of course, given God RX's talent and what he's proven so far this season, a lot of people would have suggested other players on the team should have gone. But as we'll look at here, that's not what they decide to do for a number of reasons. So I was talking about eight series losses in a row. That is exactly what's happened here. They've actually lost, uh, well, nine out of their last 10 matches. Not pretty at all. And uh, well, as you can see, early season here, they have a great start to the opening weekend. Um, you know, good run at a lot of tournaments here, especially at the this Dallas home series. They lost to Florida in the grand finals, of course, when it was on the first land, the first um, online event here in early April. And well, yes, since then, been drastically downhill. This is what Saint and the rest of the guys at Minnesota Rocker have to say about it. Why was God RX the one who was dropped when he was your best player? Are you adding him back to the lineup next year if we go back to LAN? Every player on our team agrees our biggest issue after the switch to online it was pacing. Having two main ARs, in essence, was what made things hard for us. Given the speed he played at, his his drop off in stats was what was hurting our team. Most of the map was not being opened up enough effectively. Your main slayer having a big drop statistically is going to hurt the team a lot more than when it is a sub player. If we subbed out any other player on the team, it would still have been a very linear chance and our issues would still persist. Interesting he says this, right? Given that, uh, yeah, okay, 
obviously over the course of the season, the uh, the game has been, become more fast paced. But as we looked at most recently, given the uh, the meta change now with more ARs on the map, tends to be the case where there's less engagement, right? The game is played slower. You would imagine, and we talked about at the time, given this team that God RX obviously favoured the AR early in the season and early season when we did sometimes see two ARs on the map before teams really figured out that like four SMGs, four MP5s was the way to go. We saw God RX and Assault using it quite a lot and having some great effects. However, late season in a similar environment where well assault and god rx can both use mp um, uh, both use m4s and that's now back on the menu um you know it doesn't seem to be working out too well for them right so kind of interesting you would talk about how the speed has been hurting them when you know in a sense you would imagine the roster change or the meta change would have made this team somewhat better given this thing but you know obviously online is different to land there's no doubt about that do you feel that you're going to be lacking in leadership with the game in this switch i feel like he brought more map awareness and leadership than others assault and silly have always been our two primary leaders in and out of game a seam as of late has also been stepping up massively in the comms department. Sitting in the room with the team during our Florida match this weekend, I can confidently say Justin's comms late game of map one are why we were able to close it out. So this I think is the key point, right? Like Assault is your main AR, world champion. He's honestly like statistically kind of gone under the radar this season. That's like a 1.13, pretty solid stuff overall. And um, yeah, I think Assault, you're not really going to get rid of him. I guess in some worlds you could argue, okay, get rid of Assault and keep in God RX as like the main AR now. But I feel like Assault is probably more comfortable in that role just about so I think that kind of makes sense and as he talks about leadership figure wise Assault and Silly world championship duo probably should keep them on the squad then of course we've got Silly right so this is the question you're not going to get rid of a seam he's got entry sub he's definitely been playing better as of late then you've got Silly on the team who probably is the guy that's lacking statistically in theory Alex is a fantastic player there's no doubt about that and therefore you look at Silly and you think okay maybe he isn't dropping the numbers maybe he's the guy we sub out and keep Godorex in the starting lineup then again as he said in terms of um, role changes doesn't really make too much sense right you take out silly you're like second or what your third smg i suppose you've got a seam then uh then alex then silly just behind him you know maybe that doesn't make sense in terms of role swaps yes i guess it's a one for one but if that's not the issue with your team that's not a change you can make and especially when you're talking about well leadership wise silly adds a lot to the comms and, he, and as he says here won that map one against florida this past weekend due to that communication late game one um definitely something that if you're a coach and you know brian saying to rep and probably looking at this thinking well you know silly's a pretty fundamental aspect to our team. Then as uh, Repin says in reply here, replacing Silly for Exceed would not fix our pacing issue. We want to apply as much pressure on the map as possible come playoffs, champs, and uh, the current roster provides us with the opportunity to do just that. Current roster talking about the roster that they have just made. So, um, you know, there was also this talk about Awakening, which I found interesting. Around the time of deadline, so a few weeks ago now, early July, we didn't think there was anyone who would be able to fit our team better than Exceed if we were to end up making a switch at some point. Early during the online switch back in April time, I considered signing Awakening as a lot of players on our team were losing motivation with online slash COVID. However, that was only the very start of our struggles and I had faith that we could regain our land form if mentalities were to change. And um, yeah, he talks about the meta right here, throwaway account. It's two on all maps with the exception of Cave. Godorex was also struggling with an AR recently and asked to be switched to a sub. So this is kind of explains uh, why that meta change doesn't really help them. Our new team composition mirrors that of a Dallas. Also, it worked out against phase on LAN. Subs tend to be a lot more impactful online as opposed to LAN. That's probably a true thing. The M4 on LAN is probably going to be even better than it is online 60 hertz. So um, yeah, the subs are going to be more impactful online, you could argue. And as Reppin says here to finish things off, we started scrimming yesterday. Scrims obviously on everything, but they're 22 in 6 in hardpoint dorm at scrims since the switch. Now, this doesn't necessarily say everything because when you're scrimming against a team like Dallas, for example, they are obviously a pretty comfortable team. They've had this roster for a very long time now, and they're looking at the situation probably like working every single individual map on like a specific rotation and just working on like very small tweaks, not exactly intending to win the map. Whereas a new team like a Minnesota Rocker are basically just trying to play the game, fit together and just win every single time. Whereas uh, a lot of times for teams that are kind of more practiced and have more reps in the game, they're just looking to, to tweak um, fundamentals rather than actually win the map. So it doesn't necessarily mean everything, but certainly a good start, I suppose, for this new squad under the Minnesota Rocker. And as Easy Max says right here, God RX on LAN in 2020, 1.27, 1.5, 1 5 almost in search, 1.25 in DOM. Since we've gone to online, 1.08 in hardpoint, 1.11, 0 0.92 in domination. And as you can see from this histogram right here from Easy Mac, like early this season, just dominating early season events, had a bit of a, you know, an off event here, but bounced right back back to it. And then most recently, when we've gone to the online scene, like, you know, here it goes, right? And of course, the online scene kicked in uh, a middle way through this, to be honest. And as you can see, towards the latter half of the season, hasn't exactly been too good. Certainly fallen off in terms of plus or minus. And we're now sitting in a 
the subtitle lower than what it was. Certainly understandable that this might be the route that they decided to take, and of course they have indeed taken this move. And I also found this pretty interesting as well from Reppin on the Reddit that Crone at CDL Intel talks about. So seeing how Godrx was instrumental in Rocker starting off in winner's bracket, will he be receiving any earnings from champs? Short answer, yes. Our team has grown incredibly close over the course of the past eight months. Everybody recognizes the part that Jerome, that's Godrx, had to play in our early success. All players agreed prior to the swap that if we were to sub Jerome out, he would receive a portion of each player's champs prizing. If for some reason we go 0-2 at champs, Exceed will be giving Jerome all of his prize money since Exceed technically did not contribute anything additional to the roster. So that's pretty interesting to be honest. And uh, just before we discuss the team in a little bit more detail before we end the video, just wanted to mention that T-Tiny, of course, thanks to Carl for pointing this out to me, is the um, the other substitute on this team. And as Egg says in reply, like, you know, remember what I told you at the start of the year? Who knows uh, whether Eggs told him, like, you know, this team isn't going to give you a chance. They rate Exceed or whatever that happened there, whatever it happens to be. But yeah, T-Tiny on the squad never got his opportunity so far this season on the Minnesota Rocker. Maybe next team, maybe next season it will be his time. This is how it looks then to finish things off. Exceed now in the starting lineup instead of God RX. Is this going to step them up to the next level? I kind of like it in theory in terms of the pacing. It's a similar idea really to what I talked about with Optic Gaming. You take Dashi out of the team, it doesn't look good in theory, but at the end of the day, they did look better and did improve pretty significantly with adding these uh, amateur players into the squad. So in my opinion, it could step up this team to another level. I obviously think Godorex was a fantastic player for them early this season, but lately it's, you know, fact of the matter is he hasn't really been to performing to the level that Rocker need him to. And uh, well, if that's the case and they feel like, um, you know, he doesn't want to use an AR like he's talking about going to an SMG and that's not been working out for him probably better to bring in a player who is pretty experienced with the SMG someone like Exceed that's done things in previous seasons and if Godorex isn't really motivated right now and isn't really feeling it then well take him out and we'll bring him back in next season hopefully when we're back in a land environment where he seems to be much more comfortable totally understand the change in terms of pacing it does make sense and um, obviously this team needed some sort of change and when we're talking about whether it should have been silly for various reasons I think that this Godorex move kind of makes sense and I do appreciate the transparency from Minnesota on this issue. However, are they going to be good enough to beat New York and whoever? I'm not exactly clear, right? I, I still feel like they're going to have a difficult time at champs, but maybe they'll win one or two series that they wouldn't have done otherwise. Intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Luckily, if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're new. I will see you next time.